Hello. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present our work. My name is Dominic Ligot, and I'm the team lead of Project ADES, one of the global winners of the 2019 NASA Space Apps Challenge. ADES stands for Advanced Early Detection and Exploration Service, uh, but we also named our team after the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which, was, which is a vector for the dengue virus. So a little bit about us. I run a startup called Serolytics, and we do da data science for social impact projects. At the time, we had already been doing commercial data consulting since 2017, but we got our start on using satellite data and social impact when we joined the NASA Space Apps Challenge in October of 2019. So Space Apps is a global hackathon where NASA and other space agencies allow participants to use their satellite data to address social issues. So one of the challenges that was posted in the 2019 challenge, which really got us interested, was called Smash Your SDGs. The SDGs are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And these are 17 goals that all members of the United Nations agreed to achieve by 2030. It covers many issues from hunger to poverty to health. And this attracted us in a good way, since we were looking for a way to get started in social development and also looking for concrete ways to use our data skills for social good. Back in 2019, no one had ever heard of the coronavirus. The problem we actually had in the Philippines was a dengue epidemic. So at that time, as of August 2019, dengue had infected nearly 300,000 people and claimed more than 1,000 lives. So it was pretty much as bad as COVID for us a year later. In addition to the spreading cases, we noticed that the data on dengue was actually delayed by as much as two to three months as the health system was getting overwhelmed by the disease. So our public health sector resources were very limited and there was a need to move the emphasis from treatment, which for dengue would have been too late if you were delayed by about two to three months, to prevention. So we felt that this might be, this could be a great area for, for us to tackle in the NASA challenge. When we started the project, my teammates and I thought about how we could leverage data to solve the problem of dengue. Any virus had a life cycle when it interacts with humans, but the problem we were trying to solve was actually a data problem. First, changes in the climate such as precipitation create the perfect environment for mosquitoes to breed. Then mosquitoes go around and spread the dengue virus. Actually, dengue doesn't come from mosquitoes. It actually gets transferred through the Aedes aegypti mosquito, but somebody has to be sick of dengue first. And then the mosquito would bite that person and then be able to transmit the virus. We can't transmit dengue on our own. So it's really the mosquitoes that are the, the major vector in, in infecting other people with dengue. Then as people get sick, uh, many people will start searching the internet for information on dengue, dengue medicines, dengue symptoms, similar to flu, which has been documented elsewhere. And then finally, at the end of the cycle, as cases and deaths reach the hospitals, that's the only time the Department of Health gets alerted. So we thought if we tried hard enough, we could probably get good data along several points on this cycle. And this would be the start of our concept. Our solution was to get ahead of the reports. Since dengue data was usually late, if we could correlate dengue cases and deaths with more real-time data, such as climate, Google, and satellites, we could probably have an effective indicator that could now cast dengue by location. And then if we could put this in a convenient data portal, first by visualizing existing Google Trends to see where and when people were searching for dengue, and then create a model that would establish the number of cases and deaths based on that Google and climate data, such as temperature and rainfall. We could have a tool that could help people get ahead of kind of the delayed reports and could act as an early warning indicator before things really got bad. At the same time, we could then use the satellite data provided by NASA and other agencies to pinpoint where stagnant water would be and we found research actually that this could already be done using satellite indicators. And where there's stagnant water, there probably will be mosquitoes. So it would be kind of an end-to-end -end data platform where you could detect panics 
figure out, figure out how many cases are probably happening based on the weather and Google, and then determine where you would where you would uh, you know bring your solution to stop mosquitoes. So we downloaded Google searches for dengue and dengue related terms, and this is what we found. If you look closely, dengue searches seem to follow a recurring timetable. So there is this bump every July and August and every December to January, July and August, December to January. And this was the latest data we had at that time. So while the, the time seemed to be predictable, the locations were not. So if you look at the highest spikes every year, the highest spikes seem to occur in different locations. And in 2019, the spikes were the highest they had ever been in the last five years. So we definitely needed to take action at that time. I think 2019 was the worst year for dengue on record. So we kept a track of which areas had the highest spikes in dengue searches. Uh, and these were the areas we would focus on on the hackathon. So after looking at the Google data, we got data from our local weather service and did some machine learning to fit the trend of the monthly cases of Google and climate. And to our pleasant surprise, it actually fit. We were hoping it would fit. And we were really, really happy when during the hackathon, we got it to about an 82% correlation. It's not perfect, but we felt this was already good enough as a prototype to submit to NASA. We could at least give an indicator of a trend. What we used was monthly, uh, in addition to the Google search uh, trends, monthly temperature, monthly rainfall, and searches for dengue, dengue symptoms, dengue cure, and dengue medicine. And the model actually worked. Now that we had established that we could predict the trend, we now look closely at the satellite data for the same areas where the highest spikes in the dengue was, were occurring. And we also researched that you can combine several satellite indicators such as FAPAR, which indicates vegetation, and NDWI, which indicates water and moisture. And the overlap of the two indicators could be a good way of predicting where stagnant water would be on the surface. So we ran the models and we saw the areas where there were high spikes of dengue searches were also the same areas which were dotted with stagnant water spots. So this made perfect sense. We now had the makings of an interesting tool that can be brought against the dengue virus. So at that time, when we finally saw the first satellite images come out, we actually had been working overnight on the models, but we still had about 12 hours left in the hackathon. The hackathon was from Friday to Sunday locally. So we spent the remaining few hours putting together the first prototype, which uh, you see here, basically we wanted people to be able to access the data without having to write any code or do any calculations. Just click on the link on the website and be able to check the data and the maps. So we really, we're really happy that in the, in the last few hours of the hackathon when finally uh, the web app was finally put together, we said, I think this is enough. We can maybe spend the last few hours catching what little sleep we could before we needed to make the pitch. So the 80s dashboard we, is really free of charge. We're not charging anyone for it. But our real target user was the national and local health departments. They could use this tool to generate localized dengue alerts and target areas for interventions such as fumig fumigation, misting, inoculation. Uh, there is this uh, bacteria that you can use to treat stagnant water, and uh, it would actually kill the mosquito larva. And, in fact, in our search, we also found uh, CRISPR kits that could be used to alter the DNA of mosquitoes and prevent them from A, either uh, spreading or deactivate the, the gene that makes the mosquitoes transmit dengue. There's a lot of interesting stuff. Of course, our goal was really to be the early warning indicator so that all these other solutions can now be brought uh, to bear against the mosquitoes given the, the detections we were getting on the satellites. At the same time, since we would have an early warning of where dengue searches were starting to spike, this could be an excellent lead for the government to funnel medical supplies because that's probably where people are going to get sick. 
so imagine if you had a so the Philippines has more than 7,000 islands. It's not really, really very easy to move supplies around. So that, so if you have a limited supply of, uh, you know, medicine and, you know, dengue, uh, you know, dengue equipment, you'd probably prioritize the areas where dengue is likely to strike first. And that was the intention. So in our search, we also found existing research to back up what we were doing. So we found in 2016, a study that Climate data could indeed be used to predict dengue, and they did it in another area in the Philippines. So we were encouraged by that. And then we had another paper, found another paper that showed that in Taiwan, they actually uh, successfully used internet uh, and Google searches to, to, to track dengue in Taiwan, which is perfect. And then we also found that there were other groups who were already using satellites to detect stagnant water on the ground. So we felt more than convinced that our solution could work since bits and pieces of it were already being used elsewhere. So at the time we pitched our solution in 2019, nearly five people a day were dying of dengue and more than a thousand new cases were getting infected per day. And this is why we believe our solution deserved to be heard. And uh, I guess we're happy that the, the judges agreed when we pitched this to them. I mean, uh, for those who are really looking to get into data for social good or any social good projects in general, it's very important that you're able to articulate the impact you can make. And obviously we're, we're saying every day that we can reduce the lag in responses, we can save five lives or prevent a thousand cases. And you know that more than summarized why we're very passionate about our work. So having participated in the NASA challenge and several other hackathon, hackathons since then, we believe that teams with multiple skills and backgrounds are really, you know, really stand a good chance of creating solutions. So this was the original Team 80s. There were four of us. So apart from myself, we had Claire, uh, whose background is statistics. So she was the one who put the Dengue uh, now casting model using climate and Google together. Jansen was our satellite expert. He programmed the stagnant water detection from satellite data. And we had Mark, who was our application developer. So he was the one to put together the, the initial web prototype that you saw earlier. These are the photos from the local event in Manila. So we had 48 hours of very, very little sleep, but I guess it paid off. Uh, right there in the middle, I don't know if you can see uh, in, the, in the middle photo is Dr. Paula Bontempi of NASA. So she actually visited Manila during the contest. Uh, and finally, we were completely blown away when we emerged as one of the two local winners for the event. We never expected to win. It was our first time attending a hackathon uh, together. And it was about a subject which, uh, which we barely knew about, which is health and dengue. Uh, but definitely, we'd, we'd learned a lot about dengue and mosquitoes since then. Uh, and then in February the following year, we had another pleasant shock that not only were we a global finalist, but we had actually won one of the six global awards. So ours, uh, our award was best use of data, which for us was a tremendous validation of our plan to get into social impact and social development. So this was our, for us, our big break. This is what started us on our path today. And we actually haven't looked back. In the same year, March in 2020, right before the, the beginning of the COVID lockdown. So by this time, the coronavirus was already starting to make global news. We actually got a treat when the local Department of Science and Technology and the Philippine Space Agency gave us a tour of their satellite facilities. So the Philippines also operates a number of micro and mini satellites. So, uh, and we were given an open invitation by the government to collaborate on our dengue project and other satellite applications. And then the lockdowns occurred uh, radio silence for the next few months. But then in November, after more than six months of lockdowns, we got another pleasant surprise when the group of, on Earth Observations, or the GEO, awarded us as one of the Earth Observations for SDG Global Awardees for the 80s project. And we were there alongside with institutes from all over the world who are using satellite data to solve the SDG challenges. And for us, this was just a, a, a further validation, very humbled to be part of this you know, esteemed group. 
So since 2019, we, we continue to enhance our solution. So now we have several versions uh, since the original one. Um, other teams as well have pitched to improve the 80s project. So the project is completely open source. If you want to help us out, uh, you can look us up on adsproject.org or search for it on GitHub uh, or reach out to us. Uh, we had uh, volunteers from the For the Women Foundation. So this is a foundation that teaches women data science. And they extended their dengue forecast to include other models and more regions in the Philippines. So here's a closer look of the, the current prototype so if you look on the left, you can see the search trends for, for that particular location. And then on the lower left is the nowcast for that location. So the, so the effectiveness of the nowcast actually varies by location. In some areas, it's pretty accurate. Some areas, it's a little off. But obviously, we were operating on very limited data at that time. And then on the right are the mosquito hotspots. I think this is the most compelling part of the solution because this really brings to life basically you know crystallizes the the threat of dengue and anyone who who is from these areas when they see the map of their city and they, they find out uh, that they're completely dotted with all these uh, potential areas where mosquitoes are are breeding uh, it, it really helps serve to drive the point that they now need to be mindful about the environment and find a way of securing their their uh, basically where they live from the threat of dengue. In 2020, we actually got work related to COVID as well. So we participated in creating one of the national dashboards for COVID-19 response uh, in cooperation with the Philippine Society for Public Health Physicians. And apart from tracking COVID cases, we also designed a COVID risk map based on the, the European Union's JRC informed risk framework which is a way of combining, apart from the health data, you can combine socioeconomic data, infrastructure data, and other data to not just measure the risk or the hazard, but also the vulnerability and the resilience of a population against a threat like COVID-19. And we learned a lot from this exercise. So we got into this exercise because of our NASA Space Apps uh, win. And now we, we plan to bring the learning back from this COVID exercise back to dengue which can obviously help from uh, kind of the new technologies we developed for this. So we've more than doubled our original team. Uh, so here's our current list of collaborators. Uh, Jansen has since left the group, but Mark and Claire continue to work with us. Uh, we have Cricket, who's uh, an emerging technologies expert. He's also into drones and 3D printing. Rach uh, is a researcher previously a government researcher and she's now helping us develop the enhancement to the proposal. Uh, Nick, who's a, an old high school classmate of mine, has now joined us and he's helping us with the social impact side of things, putting us in touch with foundations uh, and uh, uh, local governments, uh, particularly in the southern part of the Philippines. Uh, and then we have three esteemed experts. So Mike is an expert in risk mapping. So he was the one who introduced the INFORM framework to us in COVID, and he's now helping us with integrating it into Dengue. Uh, Thad, Thad's is based in Japan. Uh, he's done a lot of research on mosquitoes. In fact, he might be a great guest to bring on board uh, for the GLOBE mission if you want him to talk a lot about mosquitoes and Dengue in particular. So he, he runs a laboratory in Japan, which focuses on nothing but mosquitoes. And then Wilson is from he lives in Singapore and he's able to bring us a lot of satellite data uh, and also data on uh, longitude, latitude locations of certain areas that are probably vectors for dengue as well, like uh, public schools. So dengue affects children primarily. So if you know the areas where there's a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of areas where there are public schools, that's probably a, a good bet that there, you have a lot of cases in that location. So we'll, we're, we're looking to Wilson to help us with that. So it's really hard to believe that it's been more than a year since our space apps adventure. So right now we're, we're actively sourcing funding support to improve our data gathering and modeling. We also help, hope to expand our coverage beyond the Philippines. 
uh, dengue actually affects many tropical countries in Asia and Africa especially. And we hope to add to the global effort to bring the disease uh, under control. So that concludes my presentation. So thank you very much to the organizers of the Globe Mission Mosquito Initiative uh, for giving me a chance to talk. And I also want to thank the Group on Earth Observations and of course the NASA Space Apps for giving us our first shot at using data for social good. Uh, again, this is uh, I'm Dominic, and thank you for uh, having us in your in your group.